Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. Apple has just recently released their new Mac Pro, which brings back the upgrade ability to the Mac Pro lineup. However, with its $10,000 starting price, many people are left with older models like me. The decade-old Mac Pro 5,1 models are still high performers when it comes to CPU and memory, but the biggest bottleneck being the SATA 2 interface, which offers painfully slow speeds compared to modern computers. So in this video, I'm going to be taking my Mac Pro to the max. Just how fast can I make the storage in this old machine, and can it exceed Apple's new Mac Pro? I have done previous upgrades and videos on this Mac Pro, and in the comments sections below, many of you guys recommended I upgraded to NVMe drives. So I went out and purchased not one, but two Samsung 970 EVO Plus drives in one terabyte. These drives are known to be really fast, and of course, that's exactly what I'm trying to do in this video, so I picked up two of those to hopefully put in a RAID 0. But of course, the Mac Pro doesn't have an NVMe slot, so I'm going to need a way to attach it to the machine. Now, you can buy adapters to do just that, and they connect via the PCI bus. These adapters can range anywhere between $7 and $600 for the Sonnet card, which has four slots in it. This one here set me back $300, and you might think, if you could get one for $7, why did you spring out on one of these real expensive ones? Most cheap options offer no fan or heatsink for cooling, slower speed, and only one NVMe port. And because I'm going to be using this as my YouTube scratch disk, I need super reliable hardware because I don't want anything to go wrong. While I think the adapter itself is a little bit overpriced, I will link it in the description, so if you have a Mac Pro 5.1 and you're looking to do an upgrade and you've got some cash to spend, then you can maybe give this one a go. There is also an article I'll leave linked below of all of the tested adapters and SSDs that are known to work in the Mac Pro 5.1. However, the adapter I have right here at a first glance is built pretty well. All I needed to do was attach the screws on the back of the card and the spacer for the NVMe drives and then insert the two drives into their slots. Once you've inserted them at the correct angle, I can then tighten them up with the Phillips screws included with the kit. Lastly, I can remove the protective film over the heat transfer pads before I seal everything up. Pressing it down into place, I can reinstall the four screws back holding the card into place. And the process is as simple as that. Now that it's all ready to go, it's time to open up the Mac Pro and get this card installed. Once we get the side panel out of the way, we can take a look inside of the machine and see my current upgrades. You can see there I have a SATA SSD installed on the PCI lanes, and that is giving me 6 gigabit per second SATA on a SATA 2 machine. If you're wanting to get faster speeds with an SSD, you can do it that way. However, that's only going to be my boot drive as it's really not that fast. I did remove it, which gave me a little bit more space to get this new card installed. I did have a little bit of trouble aligning it, but with some wiggling, I managed to get it all connected up. Reinstalling my boot drive back in, I can reattach the PCI bracket. This Apple way of securing the PCI cards isn't that effective, as you can see, some of them still wiggle around. However, they won't be running away too fast, so putting the side panel back on, we can finally test out the machine. Plugging it back in and pressing the power button, it of course still boots up. Jumping back into macOS, I was greeted with a couple of dialog boxes saying the disks inserted were not readable by the computer. This is a good sign and it means that the disks themselves are detected by the machine. So I just needed to erase them and program them into the format that I needed, which of course was macOS Extended Journal. I did this for both drives as I wanted to test the speeds out before I put them in a RAID 0 configuration. Running Blackmagic Disk Speed Test on the drive, I got 1400 on the right and 1500 on the read. While quite a lot faster than what this machine has ever seen before, it still wasn't fast enough, and is definitely nowhere near the 2019 Mac Pro. So I decided to put the two disks in a RAID 0 configuration. This will give me two terabytes and should theoretically improve the speed of the drive. However, if one of these drives was to fail, you would lose all the data across both disks. With that being said, I put them in a RAID configuration and strangely, I got slightly slower speeds. So have we hit the limit of this 2010 Mac Pro? Well, not quite. 
It turns out Apple released a firmware update for the 5.1 Mac Pro with macOS Mojave. As I'm still running High Sierra, given my Nvidia graphics card, I'm not running the newest firmware. To update the firmware, I used the Mojave installer and followed along with the steps. According to some online articles, the new firmware supports bootable NVMe drives. So I'm hoping that this new firmware upgrade will give a much needed speed increase to my NVMe drives. The process itself was pretty painless, and after the update was installed, my NVMe drives were now reaching speeds of up to 2,500 on the write and 2,800 on the read. Now, it didn't actually matter whether I had the drives in a RAID 0 or just individually, they were still getting the exact same speed. So it appears we've completely maxed out the PCI bus on the 2010 Mac Pro. Because RAID 0 caused no speed increase, I'll put the drives in just a bunch of disks away, which will expand the storage into one virtual drive. And with that, it's time for some statistics. With the SATA 2 hard drive, you can see just how slow that is, all the way up to the NVMe drive with that new firmware. It's amazing just how big a jump it was going from the old firmware to the new one. I didn't have to install macOS Mojave to run that firmware, I just needed the installer itself. The SATA 2 hard drive at the top of that chart is actually my current YouTube scratch disk, which is a 4TB Western Digital 5400 RPM drive. But of course, how does it stack up with the 2019 Mac Pro? Well, it's about 800 megabytes a second slower on the write and 500 megabytes slower on the read. But for a decade old machine, that is truly incredible and is definitely going to breathe some new life into this machine. The total cost of this upgrade was $900, but that is going to depend on what SSDs, what size SSDs and what adapter you use in your machine. Now this is a little bit of an investment of an upgrade because if I get the new 2019 Mac Pro or even a PC, I can put that adapter card and those NVMe drives in it and it will work. So I'm not limited or stuck with the upgrade in this machine. So if you have a Mac Pro 5.1, I would definitely recommend getting an NVMe drive. Maybe don't spend as much money as I did because you can't really harness the full power of those SSD drives. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Mac Pro playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.